Hi everyone. Uh, in this session, we are going to see about the structures of IAR filters. That is infinite impulse response filters. So the outline of this presentation is going to be in this way. That is first we are going to realize uh, the structures uh, which are available in IAR. Uh, direct form 1 and 2, casket form realization and parallel form realization and after that we look after the implementation of it in problems. So what are the outcomes? At the end of the session you will be able to realize and implement infinite impulse response filters by using different structures. And, uh, and it will be, uh, it will create an ability to determine the system transfer function using block diagram representation with the corresponding difference equation. Right? So with that outcomes, uh, we will start with the realization of structures in IIR. What is a discrete time system? Uh, a discrete time system uh, is one which accepts a discrete time signal as input and it processes it and delivers the processed discrete time signal as output. So this is mathematically expressed or represented by using a difference equation, isn't it? So it is, uh, it can be realized or implemented uh, as a digital hardware like, uh, we are, like by using microprocessor or microcontroller or as a software running on a digital hardware like our personal computer. So processing by the digital hardware involves mathematical operations like addition, multiplication and delay. So these are the three major operations that are involved. Okay. The time taken to process the discrete time signal and the computational complexity depends on the number of calculations involved and the type of arithmetic used for computation. Okay. So these issues are addressed in structures for realization of discrete time systems. From the implementation point of view, the discrete time systems are basically classified as IAR and FIR systems. So the various structures proposed for IAR systems attempt to reduce the computational complexity. That is, if you reduce the number of elements that are used for add addition, multiplication and the delay, they say the computational complexity is reduced and the errors in the computation is reduced as well. Okay, And in turn, it reduces the requirement of memory and uh, finite word length effects in computations. So with uh, we will continue to the actual pathological uh, representation of a difference equation. We have already seen what is H of Z and we are familiar with this Z domain. Okay. So H of Z is actually the transfer function of discrete time IIR systems. The general representation of an IIR system is H of Z can be represented as B0 plus B1 Z inverse plus B2 Z to the power of minus 2 plus etc. up to Bm Z to the power of minus m divided by 1 plus A1 Z inverse plus A2 Z to the power of minus 2 plus etc. up to An Z to the power of minus n where A series and B series or An and Bn, uh, Bm are uh, coefficients. Okay. So what is X of Z and Y of Z? See when you are considering a system and the transfer function of the system is H of Z, obviously we would have given an input and that would yield an output, right? So the input of the discrete time system in the Z domain is considered as X of Z and the output of the discrete time system in Z domain is considered as Y of Z. So H of Z is equal to output divided by input that is Y of Z by X of Z which is already told. So the same equation is repeated here, okay? Now, what is the next step? Just cross multiply on both sides. So, cross multiplying the equation, what will we get? Y of Z into this one. So, into 1 plus A1 Z inverse plus A2, this equation. And X of Z has to be cross multiplied with this numerator. Okay. So, equating that on both sides, what do we get? So, this Z is 
is actually delay elements that we know in Z transform. So, on taking inverse Z transform of the above equation, we know that Z of X of N is X of Z, whereas Z of X of N minus K is equal to Z to the power of minus K into X of Z. This is actually shifting property, right? So, while using this, if the element is Z to the power of minus 1, our, uh, our inverse Z transform will become Y of N minus 1 or X of N minus 1. If the Z value is Z to the power of minus 2, we will get X of N minus 2. So, while taking inverse Z transform uh, on both sides, we get an equation finally like this. Y of N is equal to minus the summation of M is equal to 1 to N, AM into Y of N minus M plus the summation of M is equal to 0 to M, BM X of N minus M. So, this is a general difference equation of an IIT filter. Right. So, in general, the time domain representation of an nth order IIR system is. So, normally, the order of the filter is very, very important while designing a system. Right. That too in IIR. So, y of n is considered as the same equation we have written it here. And in the z domain representation, the nth order of the system is represented as the equation which we have uh, quoted uh, previously. So, the above two representations of IAR can be viewed as a procedure or algorithm to determine the output sequence y of n from the input sequence x of n. So, uh, also in the above representations, the value of m gives the number of zeros. So, this m decides the number of zeros and the value of n gives the number of poles in an IAR system. Okay. So, what are the different forms or structures for realizing this IAR systems? They are direct form 1 structure, direct form 2 structure, casket form structure and parallel form structure. So, we will go through one by uh, all the structures one by one. First one is direct form 1 uh, structure. So, we are considering the same general governing equation of an IAR, IAR system. So, this is the uh, equation. Now, while taking uh, now, while taking inverse uh, on taking z transform what what do we get this is the equation so how are we going to apply this output is equal to input portion okay so from structure for uh, or for direct form 1 from the direct form 1 structure, it is observed that the realization of the nth order discrete time system with m number of zeros and n number of poles involves m plus n plus 1 number of multiplications and m plus n number of addition. So, these are the computations that are said to happen. Also, this structure involves m plus n delays and so m plus n memory locations are required to store the delayed signals. Okay. So, when the number of delays in a structure is equal to the order of the system, let us say if the number of delays are equal to the, is equal to the order of the system, then we call that structure as canonic structure. But in direct form 1 structure, the number of delays is not equal to the order of the system and so direct form 1 structure is called as non-canonic structure. Okay. So, what are the uh, elements that we require while drawing a structure that in whatever form we require? So, the basic elements of a block diagram are adder, so a constant multiplier, a unit delay element and a unit advance element. So, here we have both time domain representation and Z domain representation. So, how can we represent an adder using a time domain representation? Adder is used to add two signals. Let us say the two discrete signals are X1 of N and X2 of N. So, uh, use a plus symbol 
and with an arrow the output of this will be x1 of n plus x2 of n the same thing after taking z transform what will we get z of x of n is x of z right so x1 of z and x2 of z gives the output x1 of z plus x2 of z so it is as simple um, as uh, uh, drawn what is a constant multiplier so x of n is the input signal it has to be scaled scaled up by a multiplier a so if you are if you are uh, putting the uh, coefficient inside a triangle it, it becomes a multiplier so uh, the arrow mark represents the input given as x of n after multiplying it with the coefficient a it becomes a into x of n the same thing while taking z transform how is it getting transformed x of z is going to be the input uh, going through a multiplier a the output of it will be a into x of z okay so what is unit delay element unit delay is one uh, one unit delay one okay so x of n when it is an, when it is entering inside z inverse it is unit delay element so depending upon the number of delays we can append the uh, z inverse uh, z inverse uh, boxes okay so this gives an output x of n minus 1 so z inverse to the power of minus 1 represents x of n minus 1 the same thing can be expressed in z domain as the input is x of z it goes through a delay element z inverse so what will be the output of it it is z inverse into x of z okay so unit advance element here advance in the sense uh, uh, to the power of positive value okay so x of n goes inside a advance element z z means z to the power of 1 so in that case how the time, the shifting will be x of n plus 1 so similarly in the z domain it is getting reflected as x of z getting inside z comes out as z into x of z so these are the basic things that we require in order to uh, form a structure in uh, iar systems okay so this is actually the structure of an iar system using direct form one structure Yeah, uh, you can look at this. I am giving an input x of z. The output is y of z. See, uh, we have uh, we have multipliers such as b not and uh, a not, a one, a two. Whatever is the multiplier we have, we know the difference equation of the system. So this is actually a general block diagram. See, these are adder elements. So what does it look like? Y of n. see this is actually the uh, this is actually the feedback so feedback y of n uh, when i'm giving it to a delay element z inverse this portion this particular uh, node point becomes z inverse into y of z this is what we saw so uh, while it is moving uh, while it is given to a multiplier minus a1 so this structure is actually drawn for the general difference equation Uh, governing equation of an iar system so minus a1 uh, which gives which is in turn given to an adder so see how many number of elements delay elements multiplier elements adder elements are added which makes the structure more and more complicated which is not actually serving our purpose okay so this is actually the general form of representation of direct form one structure of an iar system probably this you can make it clear while doing the problems okay then direct form structure two see uh, in the direct form structure one we are uh, wasting so many number of uh, uh, elements is it not so to reduce the number of elements we are going in for this direct form structure too here we are getting into a common function called as weighing function let us look into the general difference equation governing an iar system so this is actually the general equation when i am expanding this equation i get these terms it is expanded according to a summation of m equal to 1 to n and m equal to 0 to m okay so while taking z transform uh, for the above equation we get a sequence like this you know to take a z transform right so now 
Finally, obtaining y of z divided by x of z, you get an equation like this, which we already know, which is a transfer function h of z, right? In the case of direct form 1, we directly cross multiplied it and we, we have drawn the diagram for direct form 1. Whereas here, what we are going to do, y of z divided by x of z is equal to, we are inserting one common function called as weighing function, w of z. The same thing, I am multiplying and dividing by the weighing function, which is equal to, equivalent to the same value y of z by x of z. So, just look into it. Uh, I'm just separating the uh, uh, separating the transfer function or uh, uh, splitting the transfer function as w of z by x of z into y of z divided by w of z where w of z is multiplied and divided. Okay, so the first half since it's uh, uh, in the multiplication format, the first form, first half. I can be considered as W of Z by X of Z. So W of Z by X of Z is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus A1Z inverse plus A2Z to the power of minus 2 plus etc. up to ANZ to the power of minus n. So the other part is W Y of Z divided by W of Z. That can be written as the remaining numerator part. So now take the first equation. While cross multiplying, you will get W of Z and X of Z in the previous equation, right? So now you consider the output of the first stage as W of Z and equating this double equation to W of Z, you bring all the rest of the coefficients to the uh, right hand side, whereas you keep W of Z in the uh, left hand side, okay? So the same thing happens for this equation also. Just cross multiply because the output is y of z. You cross multiply and bring all the coefficients to w of z. Okay. So what is happening in the direct form structure too? The realization of an nth order discrete time system with m number of zeros and n number of poles involves m plus n plus 1 number of multiplications and m plus n number of additions. In a realizable system, n cube m and so the delays, number of delays in direct form 2 structure will be equal to capital N. Hence, when a system is realized using direct form 2 structure, n memory locations are required to store the delayed signal. Okay. So, this is actually the general block diagram for the governing equation of direct form 2 structure. So, here you can look at, you can just uh, uh, hold your right hand side, you can hide this part and look at the system. We are giving an input signal x of z and the output for this particular set is w of z. Okay. So, this is the first half of the equation. So, first half of the equation I can derive it using that equation. We re-equated, right? w of z is equal to. So, with the help of delay elements and multipliers and adders, we can now uh, bring in the same equation. We can obtain the same equation. So now this has become a common point. So what happens here? The number of adders as well as the number of delay elements are, add, are uh, proportionately reduced, which makes this delay elements a common pipeline. So, we are now creating multipliers for the other end that is w y of z divided by w of z. So, the next half of the equation we are considering w, you forget about this or you hide this portion and look at the, uh, the system input will become w of z and the output will become y of z. So, here we have already written the equation next half. Y of z is in terms of W of z. So, using that we can use this uh, structure. We can use the structure to obtain direct form 2. So, this is the generalized structure and here we can simply look at this is capital N is equal to M. So, there are, this is a can, perfect canonic structure whereas direct form 1 can, uh, ca cannot be a canonic structure because the uh, delay elements and the order of the system will not be equal in direct form 2. Okay. Yeah. So, conversion of direct form 1 to 2. This is how. This is your direct form, direct form 1 to 2 conversion. Uh, 
yeah so how do we convert it h of z in direct form when we take x of z uh, passing through the system which has transfer function h which gives y of z whereas uh, x of z can be given to h1 and h2 that is two transfer functions and it can be taken as y of z or otherwise this can also be done h2 h1 and then y of z or simply having h uh, we call that function as w of z right so this is a, a convert the next structure is cascade form structure of an iar filter we all know what is a cascade form structure right the transfer function can be expressed as a product of number of second order or first order sections as shown in the figure so cascade is Uh, um, a series of uh, uh, transfer functions multiplied together that is h1 of z into h2 of z into h3 of z up to hm of z which is nothing but the product of i is equal to 1 to m hi of z where hi of z can be the coefficients of a second order section or a first order section the individual second order or first order sections can be realized either in uh, we can uh, one more thing in cascade form we can design it using direct form one structure or otherwise direct form two structures the overall system is obtained by cascading the individual sections as shown in the figure so the number of calculations and memory requirements depends on the realization of individual sections so cascade in the sense h1 of z h2 of z h3 of z up to hm of z which gives our y of z right there are some difficulties in cascade structure well designed so decision of pairing poles and zeros becomes so difficult deciding the order of cascading the first and second order sections become a difficulty and then scaling multipliers uh, should be provided between individual sections to prevent the system variables from becoming too large or too small so we are supposed to provide individual sections to prevent the system variables okay so uh, last section is parallel form of an iar structure parallel hopefully you can understand it is addition parallel in the sense one after the other huh? series series will be cascade parallel will be addition so a partial fraction expansion of the transfer function in z inverse leads to the parallel form one structure so assuming the simple falls the transfer function h of z can be expressed as h of z is equal to c plus the summation of k equal to 1 to capital n ak divided by 1 minus pk into z inverse where p is the uh, poles okay right so there are two forms of representation the, pa the direct partial fraction expansion of the transfer function z leads to a parallel form two structure so here the transfer function can be assumed as wk of n is equal to minus ak1 into wk of n minus 1 minus ak2 wk of n minus 2 plus x of 2 x of n so from this the final equation is y of n is equal to c into x of n plus summation of k equal to 1 to k y of k into uh, n that is uh, purely by using partial fraction method so this is actually the block diagram representation so you can see uh, parallelly added okay so the h1 of z as how we did for uh, cascade there is one form of representation so constant plus k1 of z h2 of z up to hk of z or otherwise as such as our normal parallel for normal forms we can design with the coefficients this is minus ak1 minus ak2 this is bk not bk1 like this we can design by using the partial fraction method there are two forms available a partial fraction expansion of uh, h of z is equal to uh, uh, a problem is given here so uh, it can be see how can we do this by using long division method hope you all know what is long division method so while using a long division method you get this uh, constant plus these functions you will get and by you so the corresponding parallel form one realization can be obtained using this structure okay probably we look at a very simple problem and if you have any doubts you can uh,
maximum okay so likewise uh, we can do it with a partial fraction by using form 2 so this is obtained by using partial fraction expansion of h of z okay yeah so this is the generic formula which i have already explained uh, uh once again this is uh, one more problem which uh, which can be obtained or which is obtained by using a uh, long division method so forms can be equally expressed so with the second order section uh, we can draw this uh, parallel form like this okay right so this is with first uh, two first order uh, form with first order section so with the second order section as well as first go back to the slide and see so this is the equation i have used okay so using that delay elements and uh, point uh, point 7 you can uh, you can now uh, multiply it and you can find out the structure you can draw the structure okay so obtaining the equation is the important task for us yes so how can we draw a direct form 2 so direct form 2 as i told you earlier w of z divided by x of z the same transfer function split it into two obtain two different equations for the structure like this separating the common is uh, using the common delay elements and separating the multipliers and adders so this is the way we are using to draw direct form 2 structure gasket form realization of a digital system so an equation is given the first and foremost step is to take z transform on both sides take z transform obtain the transfer function we are getting this and now we can split it into two components so as we get h1 of z and h2 of z so h1 of z is this and h2 of z is this now we have a choice we can draw two different uh, uh, realization structures for this cascade form either i can use direct form 1 or i can use direct form so this is uh, by using direct form 2 we have drawn the structure for the cascade so this particular portion represents h1 of z and this portion represents h2 of z okay right the same problem uh, i have taken to solve for all the uh, forms so a uh, equation is given uh, in that we are we are going to find out the direct form one structure we have we are going to draw direct form two cascade form and the parallel form realization of the system right so first and foremost step is taking z transform on both sides obtain the transfer function and this will be more than enough for your uh, for drawing the direct form one structure okay so draw the direct form one structure hope you understand how to draw the structure right so direct form two the same procedure hope you remember w of z by x of z into y of z divided by w of z okay so using that procedure we can obtain direct form 2 structure like this. then finally cascade form cascade form is splitting into two since it is a multiplication component and it is in series you need not worry ma'am whether i am taking a correct numerator or denominator doesn't matter anybody can take any numerator and any denominator and form the cascade form of the system okay so h1 of z is this and h2 of z is this so we normally for cascade form we prefer to draw direct form 2 structure as it is reducing the number of computations as well as the elements that we are going to use in the system okay so finally parallel form the same transfer function by using long division method we get this so minus 3 plus still it is a uh, still it is an equation with the, uh, the with the uh, with the power of uh, power raised to 2 so power raised to 2 in the sense we know the partial fraction it is uh, first factorize into two factors there are two different poles obtained so first factor is a divided by the first pole b divided by the second pole use the residual method 
we know the residual method for applying right so use the residual method at z inverse substitute at the value of z inverse is equal to so obtaining that we can find out by using uh, find out a and b using partial fraction method so after obtaining the partial fraction we are naming that functions as h1 of z and h2 of z so this is how we draw the parallel form structure okay so c is a constant so this is actually parallel form one structure c is a constant so hope you uh, you can relate this with the uh, general structure we have drawn so c plus h1 of z is this and h2 of z is this the same thing you are going to do but we are going to draw parallelly that is uh, using different adders we are going to obtain the function okay so the for the same problem we have done four forms finally uh, the comparison of different structures the major factors that affect our choice of a specific realization are computational complexity memory requirement and finite word length effects assuming that m is even with m equal to n whereas this m is not equal to n in direct form one structure okay so in direct form one uh, canonic form canonic form is direct form two and cascade form and parallel form the multiplications are 2m plus 1 addition performed are 2m and only in parallel form it is 3m by 2 plus 1 whereas the registers that it is consuming is 2m in direct form see how drastically it has reduced from uh, direct form to so we employ only m uh, m registers for uh, storing the elements in all these forms so that uh, so the assignment for uh, this particular uh, session is the assignment uh, uh, in forms is very specifically this one all these four problems are university uh, problems very important problems for examination but those are very easy if at all if you have any doubts you can ask me okay so thank you so much for listening very patiently thank you so much